This video is about the use of the Adobe Scan app that uh, is available. And what it can do is take written work uh, that might have been done in a, a test or assignment and enable you to scan it on your phone, save it into a PDF, and then return it back to uh, the teacher, either via email or a link via a Google Drive. Now, some people might have a scanner at home, and of course that would be the first option if you've got a scanner as part of perhaps a printer or a standalone scanner um, for that to be used to scan work to send back, but um, this is a pretty good option. It's probably better than taking photographs of work and just putting them straight into a, a document or emailing individual photos, something like that. It's a little bit... Uh, or well, it's not, not an ideal option compared to what I'm about to show you. So let's start uh, with looking at the Adobe Scan app. Okay, back to start. Okay, so with the Adobe Scan app, um, if you go to your app store and search for it, it's this one. There's a couple with similar names, uh, but this one here with a sort of aqua colored logo is the one you should be looking for. Once you've downloaded the app, you've got the option of signing in with Google, Facebook, or with Apple. Um, I recommend that you sign in with Google. So you just sign in with your uh, normal Google account and provide the password. Now, it may take you back to this screen because it likes you to have a Adobe ID. So um, you might feel like you're in a bit of a loop, but after you've signed in with Google, if you create um, an Adobe ID, you'll be up and running with this app. Okay, so I'll show you a, a video now of how the app works. Go to full screen. Uh, so this is the Adobe Scan app. As I've mentioned before. So here we're scanning the document, and I'll pause it to various stages. So it's scanning the first page, and um, you can see the little dots there. You don't have to do anything with that. It's automatically looking at you know, what's the extent of this page. Then it asks you that uh, just to hold steady once it's captured what it thinks is the page. And it'd be a good idea to have the page laid down flat uh, on a surface rather than held in your hand or something like that. So it's easier for it to recognize what is that A4 page. So it takes a picture of the first page. Uh, then you click continue down the bottom there. You'll see now it's placed the first page there. So um, it's gonna keep on going. You can do as many pages as you like uh, until you nominate that the document is done. So here we go now with the second page. Just laid it there. Once again, it's searching for the A4 size. It's holding steady. There we go. It's taken the second page. Continue. And onto the third page. Laying it down flat. And there's capturing the third page. Okay, so at this stage, uh, let's uh, say the document's finished. Uh, you would click down here um, on the three pages, okay? And you've now got um, the three pages together, okay, in the one document, uh, as in the PDF form. So it's taken all that, that handwritten material there, uh, and it's converted to uh, three pages of a PDF. Now you'll see down here there's uh, little menus that you can, time doesn't permit me to go into it right now. Um, you can experiment yourself, but you can edit uh, that photo um, as well, okay? Uh, and you can see the headings down there, but we won't go into that at the moment. We've just got the PDF. Um, now it's got save PDF, okay? So once you've got that PDF, you then save it. Okay, you can see there it says saving as PDF. Okay, it's uploading to the document cloud. Once it's done that, there's the ability then to share it to different places. And this is the next step. So what we've done so far, we created a PDF of those pages. Uh, could be a large document, could be 15 pages, 20 pages, it doesn't matter. Um, it says now use share link an email to share links uh, to your file. Anyone with a link can view it, that sort of thing. Okay, so let's look what happens next as I just exit out of that, that uh, video there. And we'll go on to the next page. 
Um, okay, so there's the option there to share. Just keep the cursor still. So, and we can share it to lots of different places. Okay, so I can share, airdrop it, message it via SMS. Uh, Various mail platforms obviously would use the Gmail. You can save it to a note, drive, etc. etc. I suppose the two ones we'd probably be most interested in is uh, emailing it or saving it to drive, but there are other options as well. So if you select the email option, it sets up an email, and you see down below there, I'll just uh, get rid of that toolbar. You see down the bottom there, you've got that PDF as part of the attachment to the email, and then I just um, send it to whoever I want to send it to. Okay, so that's uh, by email. Now, if I select, if I go back, if I select Google Drive, ask me to select which uh, account. If I've got a couple of different uh, Google accounts linked to my phone, um, it will ask me which one. I can select it. Then, whether it's my own drive or if you've got shared drives, whether you're doing that, then you can nominate which folder you can put it in and save it there. Okay, of course, once it's saved in your Google Drive, then it can be shared with somebody else. So there's a couple of options there uh, for sharing the PDF once it's finished with. It's a good thing uh, to do is to download the app to your phone. It's a free app. I should have mentioned that uh, from the start. And then you can start experiment, experimenting. You might want to send something uh, you know, to a friend or to a teacher just as a test. I'm sure they wouldn't mind um, just to see how it goes. But I think that would be a very efficient way of getting written material, uh, whether it be an in-class assessment or test, um, back to your teacher. Okay, I hope that helps. Bye for now.